If you're watching this video, then you probably just want to generate coordinates for the NACA airfoils as quickly as possible and as cheaply as possible, and I'm going to show you how to do that right here. We're using a shareware program called DesignFoil, and you get this from Driescode software. You basically go to driescode.com, click on download, click on free demo, click on the expert link over here on the right, and you can download the installation file for the shareware demo, and also you can download the airfoil archive collection file. You don't really need this because there's so many built-in generators in the tool, but if you wanted to, you can download this. It has 1500 airfoil coordinates files compiled by the University of Illinois. So if you want to do that, great. Uh, you don't have to though, because a lot of the airfoil generators are in DesignFoil. So let's go ahead and launch it. After you install DesignFoil, it creates a icon on the desktop. Uh, now you can double click on it. And if you're on Windows 7, it asks you this question. Click yes. You can get around that also by right clicking and choosing run as administrator. This is the standard user license agreement. It explains how the maximum lift coefficient is predicted and what limitations there are. It also explains the software user license agreement. In this case, I agree and I click yes. Here is the helpful tooltip window, the three step method to generating and exporting the coordinates. Step one, select a new airfoil from the airfoils menu. Step two, use the tools menu to modify, alter, or analyze your airfoil. And of course, step three is when you're all done, you can store it locally in the My Airfoils window, or you can export it to Excel, or you can export it to your CAD, or however you want to treat the coordinates. But we're not interested in this window anymore. Let's push close. Let's jump right into it. Let's generate an airfoil. I'm going to click on Airfoil and NACA Airfoils. And you can see it does NACA four digit, four digit modified, five, five modified, 16. Of course, the laminar flow NACA six series here at the very bottom. But let's make it easy. Let's start with a NACA four digit airfoil. The default airfoil is a 2412 used on a lot of general aviation airplanes back in the day. Uh, if I wanted to increase this to say the 4415, it's very easy. You just click on the up arrow button next to the little two. That changes the camber height. So we have the 44 portion. And for the thickness, I just click the up arrow a few more times. And that gets us to 15, so 4415. Now, if we come down here, we look at the airfoil box, you'll notice that uh, if I hover the mouse over the coordinates, the points become red and they tell me the coordinate X and Y locations. Uh, this red circle right here tells me the maximum uh, ham camber line height. And if I wanted to zoom in, I could just left click the mouse and drag a rubber band box and it'll zoom in. If I want to zoom back out, I just push the blue button for generate and restore view. Not a problem. If I have any questions about perhaps the use of this particular airfoil, then I click on this button up here that says NACA four digit history help and it opens up the help file. This explains what all the parameters mean, common uses, and common references. Uh, this is a lot of our, a lot of people tell me this uh, help file is very useful, but um, let's get back to generating this airfoil because that's really what it's all about. Uh, now, this airfoil is defined by 71 points. You might think that's not very many, but as it turns out for the virtual wind tunnel part of design foil, uh, it's a panel method and you really don't need a lot of points as long as you have enough uh, of the curvature captured near the, the leading edge and trailing edge, um, it works really well with just 71 points. But if you, for example, need a lot more points, go over to the right. There's the airfoil construction parameters window, the common, and this allows you to change the number of points. So I'll change it to say 101. Push enter. And that generated a lot more points on there. Um, you can go up there several hundred points, whatever you need. Now you can also change the point distribution. So there's a list here. You can do dense endpoints, which is the default. You can do a dense leading edge. You can do a dense trailing edge, although I'm not sure why you would want that. You can do equal distribution. There are some uh, uses for that, but they're pretty rare. Yeah, but let's go with dense endpoints, uh, thickness increments. Uh, sometimes people have uh, the thicknesses on the airfoils are very specific, like a 15.02. So you would change the thickness increment, increments sorry, down to 0.01. You go over to your airfoil window and you push up and it only goes up by 0 0.01 increments. So that would be a NACA 4415.02. I'm gonna take that back down to 15. I like whole number increments. Uh, the construction method, this just uh, defines how the thickness distribution is added. 
Um, the standard NACA basically adds the thickness distributions normal to the mean camber line. Vertical summation simplifies it. It just adds them up and down. The other option, uh, let's see, normalize cord length. Uh, you can say do not normalize. Uh, so as it turns out, the airfoils go from the leading edge of the camber line to the trailing edge of the camber line. But if you have a lot of camber, let me show you how that looks. I'll zoom way in. You can see uh, that uh, design foil is actually normalizing the far left point to the most far right point. And if I were to normalize that and say do not normalize, you would see that it actually keeps the camber line as the defining cord length. But let's take this back to our wonderful 4415. Uh, and oh, by the way, if you want to do the symmetric airfoils, you would just take this and keep dropping it down until it gets to zero. And lo and behold, you have a 0015 airfoil, a nice symmetric airfoil. Now, once you're done with this, you can click on the uh, one of these purplish buttons down here to push the store. This is in the My Airfoils. Think of this as kind of a suitcase where you can store up to five airfoils. I push that, and now it's stored there permanently. The next time you bring up Design Foil, it's going to show that. If you expand that, you can see this. This, this window suddenly becomes the working window, but I'm going to compress that view, take this back here. Now, at this point, if that's all I need, I just need the coordinates, well, I can export them in a couple different ways. I can click on File. I can save the airfoil. I can save it to several different formats. Some of these are uh, popular solvers. Um, uh, you would enter the cord length and push save and it would save the name of the file there. You could also print the airfoil. Now this will print it um, full scale. So let's say you have like a two foot long cord. It'll break it up and it'll print it in uh, sheets on a normal printer and you can tape them together. There's some marks that help you line it up uh, if that works for you. Or you can just, you know, export it to your whatever your DXF format is and print on a large format printer, whatever works for you. Uh, another thing you can do is you can edit and you can copy. You can do the copy of the airfoil picture to a clipboard. You can do thick lines or thin lines. Click on thick lines and we'll open up, you can open up Word or uh, PowerPoint or even Paintbrush and you can do a uh, control V and it pastes this right into your document. Uh, this helps generate um, reports really nice. I, I like this feature. Uh, let's see, also, um, an another real quick thing, um, if you go to CAD export, you can actually send your coordinates to Excel, and Excel will open up automatically, and lo and behold, um, all of your coordinates and their index and the name of the airfoil are shown. That's pretty slick. I like that. You can also go into the tools geometry, and you can do all kinds of crazy things. You can modify mean lines. You can actually uh, add mean lines to it. Uh, let's say you can apply this to a mean line. You can do all kinds of interesting stuff. You can import uh, custom mean lines. You can do simple flaps. You can do simple flaps uh, where you can just kind of simulate flaps. Pretty slick, right? Let me put that back at, z Oop, put that back at zero. Uh, you can choose where the hinge point is. Uh, let's see, you can also do all kinds of interesting things. You can uh, query the nose radius. It tells you the nose radius of this particular airfoil. Uh, there's a bunch of little tools in here. It's pretty pretty neat. Um, you can do the standard atmosphere model. Uh, you can also uh, send coordinates to Excel here. You can actually do that from a couple different spots. But uh, let's jump right to the tools analysis because a lot of you want to do slightly more than coordinates. So you go to tools analysis and click on virtual wind tunnel. Put that there. Uh, and this is a panel method. It's very quick. You just push the green button, push to run analysis, and there you have it. It's uh, three degrees. You can take it down to zero if you'd like. Push to run analysis. And what this generates, the default, is actually the pressure coefficient curve. Uh, this, is, this is really standard textbook stuff. And up at the top is probably what you're interested in. It's got the lift, drag, and pitching moment information. Um, there's tabs here, so you can actually click on, this is the velocity dis distribution uh, and boundary layer thickness information. You can tell where there's, um, there is so a little bit of laminar and some turbulent, uh, pretty cool stuff. You have a summary box right here. There's so much stuff on this particular window. If you want to create a uh, drag polar plot, you can do that. 
Uh, you can look at the classic NACA formula that you see in the back of Abbott and von Dohenhoff, or you can click on the Epler format. Um, you can find out some information. You can get some L over D lines here and just some pretty neat stuff. You can also send all this information to Excel, which uh, puts it all into a nice chartable format if you'd like. I'll go ahead and close that. Uh, oh, by the way, you can you can do quite a few of these drag pullers. They, they will stack up on here with uh, different color lines to separate them. Um, you can simulate compressibility effects. Now, I will say that this is uh, subsonic, so you can't really go higher than, I think, uh, Mach 0.7. Um, and Reynolds number, if you need to calculate your Reynolds number, push the pink button. It brings up a standard atmosphere model. Uh, you can do it in feet and meters. Uh, there's all kinds of options here. It's, it's uh, pretty handy if you want to. You can copy this to the clipboard. Just do Control V. There you go. You can copy that and paste that into Word documents. Um, basically, Designfoil I'll try to make it as um, user friendly as possible. Um, under CAD export, it also exports to uh, uh, Katia, uh, SolidWorks, Rhinoceros. Um, some of those versions, it depends on what version you have. Uh, give it a try. Uh, try it in the demo version. Um, see if it works for you. If it works in the demo version, it's going to work for you in the full version. There's also a Wing Crafter tool. Uh, this is pretty slick. Uh, this is a real basic wing design tool. Um, you do the wing layout. You basically tell it uh, the cord lines, uh, the butt line, the span, um, offsets, and all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> you can run the analysis. It tells you total lift, uh, total pitching moment, drag, etc. Uh, on your wing. Um, you can export it to uh, SolidWorks or Rhino and uh, you can get a slice of your wing if you have a complex wing. Uh, you can also trade these files with other people if you happen to know other folks that have design foil. But this is a pretty handy tool. And again, if you need help, you just push the help button and it brings up this interface. Uh, wing stall is not predicted with the 3D wing tool, by the way. Just, just a caveat there. Uh, so there you go. That's pretty much all you need to know to use DesignFoil. It's really one of the quickest ways to generate any, almost any imaginable NECA uh, airfoil series. There are also a couple other airfoil styles. Um, if you click on airfoil, there are other airfoils. You can do, um, for example, an elliptical airfoil. Um, I'm, I've always been pretty excited about elliptical airfoils. Um, I actually did some wind tunnel tests on these back in the day um, for kind of an interesting project. Uh, for in, in school. Um, let's see. You can run analysis on that. Pretty slick stuff. Let's see. Uh, another type of airfoil. You can use the famous Joukowsky airfoil. Look at that. Uh, <clears throat> I always, always thought this was a very interesting airfoil. You can click on the various locations here uh, for, the <clears throat> for the various uh, circle center points. Uh, and again, if you need help about that, the Joukowsky airfoil tells you everything you need to know about that. Uh, other airfoils, uh, deformable airfoil. Uh, oops, I'm, this window of the video card is goofing up on this one. Um, but you can stretch it and you can make all kinds of interesting... Look at that, look at that. Oof, some interesting camera there. Um, you can analyze these airfoils. Oops, you can reset all values. You can tinker with the camera line. This one is really fun to play with. Um, you can also do uh, Mix and Match Builder. Now, Mix and Match Builder requires uh, that you do have uh, basically the UIUC airfoil coordinates. <clears throat> basically, you pick one for the upper and one for the lower, and it puts them together, and you can mix and match and create some pretty funky airfoils. Look at that. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> Anyways, um, if you do have the Airfoil Coordinate Database, the UIUC one that you can get from my website, uh, you can import that file here. So this one's pretty neat. You can just step down. Look at that. Go down through all these airfoils. There's some pretty funny ones um, and some pretty cool ones. There's, I think, the uh, P51, uh, P51 Mustang airfoils are in here. Uh, let's see. Push run analysis. Um, okay, but if you just go back to the old uh, NACA 6 series, this is the last one I'm going to show you. Um, this is the laminar flow airfoil series, um, the first one that was really parameterized 
and made popular by the NACA or NACA. And it, it, uh, it actually works uh, really well. Um, let's get this, let's, uh, there you go. Uh, so you can see this one has laminar flow all the way back to about f um, basically almost 50%. Uh, well, before 50%, 45%, something like that. Um, you can click on the modified 6A. You can see that that really straightens the back end of the airfoil. Um, you can do mean line parameters, uh, thickness increments, etc. And of course, you can define it with as many points as you have over here in the airfoil construction parameters. Uh, but that's pretty much design foil in a nutshell. Um, again, download the shareware version, give it a try. Um, if you, if you want to learn more, uh, I'm going to be publishing more videos about uh, general airfoil information, general airfoil knowledge. Please push the uh, subscribe button down at the bottom of the, of the video here. Um, and hopefully this is uh, going to help you generate the coordinates for whatever project you're working on. If you're working on something cool and you can share it, uh, let me know. Uh, if you have any questions, ask them in the, com in the comment section down below. Thanks.